sounds silly, but but dancing around the rules like that was so much fun because it, it it's crazy because we're grown ups. Mm -hmm. You go to you know you go to playground today. You know a four year old kid. Fuck! I didn't get a blowjob today. You know like like what? It's crazy. You know. Oh, but I think I think somebody said damn on the radio. Oh my god! I'll, now I'll never go to college. You know. <laughs> so it's so was it. Oh, I thought we had a thunderstorm going. <laughs> did it, did it, is that pretty clear? But yeah. did anyone uh, inspire you to tell jokes or write jokes? The my mother said in, in uh, Red Skelton was on Tuesdays when I was growing up, and my mother said that she used to come into the living room to watch me watch Red Skelton <laughs> because Red Skelton was very funny, but he got such a kick out of himself, and he laughed at himself, and he tried to make the other people crack up, and I always got a kick out of it, and. <laughs> Once again, I didn't wasn't aware of anything, but when people ask that question, you got to go back in your mind. Um, I've always laughed at myself. I don't know what people say. Well, you laugh at your own. You know, it's so funny. There's two things you don't do if you want to be a comedian. There's two rules. There's only two rules you have to follow. Number one is you don't tell old jokes, and number two, you don't laugh at yourself. Those are the only things I do. <laughs> I tell old jokes and laugh at myself. That's all I do. I don't do anything except the two things you're not supposed to do. But I made a few bucks so to help the world. But I don't, I always, I get a kick out of what's funny. People used to, people used to say, oh, you laugh at yourself. You know, I'd write a joke and hand it to Howard and he'd say it and I'd roar. You know, so, and then, but, but if I hand him a joke Fred wrote, you know, I, I became the conduit so Fred could write jokes too. He never wrote jokes till I got there. And I'd give something and I would roar. Or Howard would say something on his own, and I would roar. You know, I used to come home and Nancy say, you know, the best thing you wrote today is when you said the chicken crossed the road. Oh, that wasn't mine, that was Fred's. But you laughed so hard. I, yeah, because it was so funny. You know, I'm an equal opportunity laugher. I just have to think and realize what I write is very funny. You know what I mean? I would laugh very hard at everything. I got thrown out of two of the loudest places in the world. I got thrown out of the high school lunchroom. <laughs> Do you know how loud it is? And I got thrown out of the high school lunchroom for telling jokes and laughing too Not for being dirty, for laughing too loud at myself. I got thrown out, not thrown out of a bar, I got thrown out of the bar in the bowling alley. Do you know how loud a fucking bowling alley bar is? Jackie, you're disturbing people. <laughs> so, I mean, I, people say, oh, that's so embarrassing. No, to me, that's a claim to fame, you know. And I always laughed, and then I worked at a country club with this guy who would not laugh. He was a Dutch pantry man. He's about 70 years old. For four years, I told him jokes. He wouldn't laugh. And the more he didn't laugh, the more I laughed at myself. So I don't know if you're a method actor. Maybe when I'm laughing at myself, I'm channeling, trying to make him laugh because I'd have to laugh for both of us or something like that. So I don't really know the answer. But I know I always love jokes. So of course, I love Red Fox. And then Rodney was my hero. So when I got to travel and write for Rodney, it was like I died and went to heaven. Howard Stern, I didn't know who he was. I couldn't give a shit. You know, I got to work with this guy, and everybody said, like, wow, Howard Stern, Howard Stern. He's a Jewish guy with a big nose, but it's where it stops for me. But Rodney was like the, the, the funniest guy with the funniest premise ever. And to be with him, you know. Um, but I was never a guy that watched George Carlin or Robert Klein said, oh, I want to do that when I grow up, or I want to be that. I never knew. I was a poor kid from... He snorts. I didn't know that you could take a, have a major in. I remember, I remember when I was in college, the drummer in my band couldn't have been uglier. And I said, "What's your major?" He said, "Radio, TV." I said, "You gotta be shitting me!" <laughs> it never dawned on me that you could take that as a major. Like, I, hey, a show business is going to be my career. I didn't. I thought somebody just plucked you out and said, "Hey, guess what?" You know, like Murray Janos. Son Craig was in my class. He and Mary Janoff wrote for the Long Island Press. So, oh, he could be in trouble. This is because his father's a sports writer. Or, you know, uh, uh, Wendy uh, Poland. Her father was not Poland. He was, he was Flash, uh, Captain Video's right hand man. And then he was on General Hospital. Well, she could be in trouble. This because, you know, it, it's like, you know, handed down. I didn't know you could actually, you know, choose that, you know. But uh, I just have always laughed and had fun and laughed and had fun, you know. So, there was no specific. Um, do you prefer being behind the scenes or like in front of the camera? I, you know what? I I like the whole thing. I'm old, you know, and I've been around the block, and I don't care if I'm in front of the camera, behind the camera. You know, it, it come. You, you start to realize that if you're in front of the camera, you only get old, and if you're behind the camera, you only get better. Mm -hmm. You know, but I say that, and meanwhile, I'm still, you know, doing trying to do this reality show and trying to do this comedy special because it, it's just it's all fun. You know, it really is, you know, there's 
you know, there's people who say, oh, I don't ever want to be in front of the camera. And then somebody says, you want to be in front of the camera? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so it's, it, it just, it sounds so cliche, but it just gets in your blood where you really dig it. I love the stupid stories. I'll tell you that the best story, I, this has not got anything to do with anything, but I don't care. <laughs> I was in this movie, White Irish Drinkers, which is a double oxymoron. <laughs> and the, there's a famous stage actor that was an avatar named uh, Stephen, Stephen Lang. So I got one line in this movie. And I thought I had five words, but it turned out I have six words. I thought I said, what are you assholes doing? But in reality, I said, what are you assholes doing here? So I'm a lot more famous than I thought. So I went to Toronto, and we start telling stories. And this guy, Stephen Lang, says, and we start telling midget jokes. And Stephen Lang goes to me, well, I have the best midget joke, best midget story. And I'm like, does he know that he's talking to Jackie the Joke Man? He's going to tell me, he's going to tell me the best midget story. And he told me the best midget story I've ever heard. <laughs> It's 1962, it's the Cannes Film Festival, and the, one of the best films that's going for the Palme d'Or, which is like the Oscar of the Cannes Film Festival, is called Ship of Fools. And it's about a, a, a big boatload of Jewish people, and it's, it's Hitler, and it's, it's just a devastating movie, but it's interesting. And like the movies of the way back then, you could have a very heavy movie, but there's always a little comic relief, which they seem to have lost over the years. You know, you could have the heaviest movie in the world, and then there's a little bit of fun. Which is, which is great. So the, the, the guy who's telling the story is a dwarf. He's, he's, he's the host of the movie, kind of. And it made it very interesting. And this guy's name is Michael Dunn. And you guys are way too young, but there was a show in the 50s called Wild Wild West. He was the dwarf on Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West was like a James Bond, only it was in 1860. And there was, you know, there was a cowboy who had... Not superpowers, but whatever, whatever you'd call what James Bond has, you know, gadgets, you know. And his sidekick was, was a dwarf. Now, for the most part, dwarfs are very small, they're very angry, they're very horny, and most of them are very drunk all the time. And anybody in Hollywood knows this guy was infamous for being the smallest dwarf, the drunkenest dwarf, the horniest drunk, dwarf, and the angriest dwarf. And he's in this movie, Ship of Fools, and Simone Cineret is in the movie. And her best friend is Claudia Cardinelli. And the two of them are the Italian version of Marilyn Monroe, Jane Russell, beautiful, beautiful movie stars, perfect bodies, just sexual wah, right? So they're at a party for this movie, and Michael Dunn is bombed out of his mind, and he's been there at the Cannes Film Festival for a couple days with these goddesses. And Claudia Cardinelli's standing there, which has a very low-cut dress, and she's just about hanging out of the dress, and just jewelry, and she's reeking of perfume, and she's had a few glasses of wine, and she just is just delectable. And Michael Dunn is standing next to her, he's about up to her knee, and he's drunk and angry and horny, and he goes, Claudia! <laughs> Claudia, before this week is up, I'm gonna fuck you! <laughs> and she says, Michael Dunn, if you do, and I find out about it. <laughs> I said, okay, you win. That's the best story I ever heard. And the point of it being, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, stories like that, the silliness and the craziness, it's just so much fun. It's, it's a drug. It's just, it's just great, great fun. So... It's, it's all, you know, when you go to the party, the rap party, nobody knows who's running the camera and who's in front of it. Nobody cares. It's just, just great, great fun. And it turns out being the talent in a, in a movie or in a, in a TV show, there's no glamour. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it's just another job. You know, you don't realize that, but it, but it really is. You know, everybody got to be, you got to be somewhere at a certain time and you got to do a certain job. This guy points the camera, this person just says five words in front of the camera and then everybody waits. It's that simple. It's not like, oh, here's, here's, here's Mr. Martling, kill me a grape, fuck you. <laughs> yes, sir. It says that I read somewhere that you um, told Kuwait and I ran with uh, Runner Up from American Idol. That, um, I, I never watched American Idol, but Bo Bice was on American Idol and he came in second to Carrie Underwood. Now, I, even I've heard of Carrie Underwood, but I had never heard of Carrie. Bo Bice is a country singer, uh, a country 